Hi everybody, today we're going to look at snapping out apart using traditional tags. So when we're using traditional tags, you will need to hand finish the back face that you've attached the tags to. However, the benefit to this style of tags is that you can attach to any freeform surface, including if you've got radiuses or chamfers. So watch the next video to see how you can snap apart out using these traditional tags. So snapping out apart in one operation using tags. So first of all, you can see I've got my fusion file open here. I've got my part model loaded in and I've got my work holder set up. The first thing that I'm going to do is create my tag model. Once I've got a tag model created, this is added to the setup within Fusion. So if I go into setup, model, you can see within my model, I've got my part model selected and I've got my tag model selected. So the basic principle of how this is working. You may have noticed that this time I haven't needed to use avoidance geometry. This is because with the design of these tags, I'm happy for Cam Assist to rough the whole model out in one go. Because with all material removed, these tags will still be strong enough to support the part for finishing. So there's no need to blank anything off with avoidance geometry. So we create the tag model, load it into the Fusion setup, and then run Cam Assist. Cam Assist will give us 80% of the program. Once this is complete, I need to come in and manually add the last two tool paths to come in and snap the part off. Aside from this, there is a couple of manual adjustments and manual strategies that I need to add in terms of the finishing. What Cam Assist won't do is extend or blend surfaces and contours. So because of these tags, I'm going to have to create some 2D geometry to finish the outside and inside profile uh, correctly. When I say inside profile, I mean inside profile between the part and, and the tag profile. So first of all, I've got a finishing profile. So this runs around the outside of the part. That basically loops around the outside of the tag, around the part, and then blends uh, to the tag the other side. Then second, I basically create a set of pockets. So the first set of pockets is to finish the inside profile of the part here. And then the second set of pockets basically overlaps the other side. So we come in, finish this inside pocket, finish these two profiles, and between the two sides, we've finished the whole inside face of that part. So Cam Assist gets us 80% of the way there. Then we have to add two strategies to snap the part off and then three manual strategies to finish the profile neatly. So let's take a closer look at the design of these tags. First of all, these are traditional tags which do a join to the bottom face of the part. This means that when you snap the part out, you will need some hand finishing to ensure a good surface finish on the bottom face. However, the benefit to using these tags are is that you can hold a much larger variety of parts using this system. The, part, the bottom of the part can be free form, a regular shape, have chamfers and rads on the outside profile, it doesn't matter. So let's take a closer look at the geometry of these tags. My tags here are about 15 millimeters wide and I've gone for a thickness of five millimeters. The reason I make them so thick is that I want to be able to remove all the material in one go and still have the part rigid enough to finish. So in terms of the slot, what you have to consider is what diameter cutter you want to use to go in there and rough and finish the back face. So my slot width here is 11 millimeters. So that allows me up to a 10 millimeter cutter. The other thing to think about is the formation. As you will see here, I've laid out my tags in a tripod formation. So imagine basically they're two sets of triangles. This does two things. A, it makes, it, it makes the part stronger, which helps avoid vibration. And B, it means that I can access the inside centre face from a combination of both sides. The other thing to consider um, is this chamfer on the outside of the base. This is purely for avoidance of the tool holder. So by adding this chamfer, it gives me, it gives me more accessibility so that I can reach to the centre point of that face. Let's watch the simulation and have a look at the manual wall finishing strategies that have been added. So, first of all, we're going to use our 2D profile contour to basically finish the outside profile in a nice uniform fashion. The toolpath starts on the outside edge of the tag, then rolls around nicely to the other side of the tag. What this is doing is it's blending its inside face nicely. The next toolpath that it does is uses the first set of pocket geometry to come in and finish in between the inside face and the uh, tag profile. Once that's complete, we flip over to the other side and we use a second set of pocket geometry. So this is why it's important that the tags don't overlay each other. 
Because the tags don't overlay each other with two different sets of pocket geometry from each side, we can access the full inside face of the part. So they were the three strategies that I needed to manually add to finish the walls correctly. So as, as the tags are modelled up, Cam Assist now takes back over and we come in and we just clean up these bits above the tag face. So as you can see, with that done, the whole inside of that back face is now finished apart from where the tags actually are. So let's now run the simulation and see how we snap this part out. So as you can see, it only takes two manually added 2D contour milling strategies to snap the part out. So as you can see, I've got my finished part pre-snap out. The back face is complete. The only thing I have to do now is reduce the thickness of the tag so I can snap the part out. So in terms of the end mill that I've used, you don't want to go too big with the diameter. Obviously you have to have enough reach so that you can access the bottom of the tag and still clear the base profile and the vice jaw. Another thing to consider with the end mill is that it must be a sharp cornered end mill. You don't want any radiuses on the corner of the tool because a radius will make the tag too strong. So what we're doing here is level by level bringing down the tag thickness, thickness to about 0.25 millimeters. So sometimes 0.25 millimeters will be exactly what you want, depending on the part size and thickness, you might want to make the tag thinner or thicker. It's one of them things that sometimes need to be, needs to be adjusted and optimized on prove out. So as you can see, when we're reducing the tag thickness, we're not doing it in one go, we're doing it carefully. So I think here I'm taking 0.25 step downs. Again, it can vary a little bit, depending on uh, part size and thickness and cut of diameter, etc. So with the first side complete, we now turn over and do exactly the same thing the second side. It's worth noting that sometimes it's good to leave quite a big side allowance. So for example, I'm not really leaving the side allowance here, but here. But if I was to leave a 0.5 side allowance, it just means that um, I'm definitely not going to get any chatter in the face. I'll have a little bit more tag to, uh, to polish off, but I will avoid chatter on the face. So, now the thickness of all five of my tags has been reduced, the part is now ready to be snapped out. That's how you snap out a part in one operation using the traditional tag method. So let's talk about the benefits of snapping out a part in one operation. The first obvious one is reduced setup time. The second one is that it eliminates the possibility to set one side of the part wrong to the other, so data error. The third benefit is that as long as your machine kinematics are good, all the features should come out with good positional accuracy to each other. So with this part in particular, it took Canvas seven minutes to generate the program. I spent about 15 minutes manually programming the snap out and I would say that overall cam assist is saving me about four hours, four to five hours.